Well, the hills are alive with the sound of sweet music to our ears. The growls of Mercedes DTM cars rumbles around this Red Bull ring circuit as we head into round nine of nine of season three of the Mercedes AMG e-racing competition. It's here at last, the final round of league play, and it's sure to be a stunner as the only prize on the line, at least to our knowledge so far, is pride. My name is James Kirk, and alongside me, as always, is Mr. Rob Wiesemuller. And Rob, it's the final round. I can't believe it's come so quickly, but what a track to end it on. It's one of my personal favorites. It's the Red Bull Ring. Hello, everyone. Hello, James. Yes, the Red Bull Ring holds the last online race of the Mercedes-AMG e-racing competition, and this season has really flown by. We went through the whole history of Mercedes-AMG DTM cars, and now we arrived here for the final step on the Red Bull Ring with the car of 2015, the season in which Pascal Wehrlein took the title in the DTM in the Mercedes AMG C63. It's a, it's a gorgeous circuit, as you can see on that track map, a lot of elevation uh, located in the Styria Mountains as well. The, the picturesque scenery uh, only really matched by the, the beautiful simplicity of the track and matched once again. It's a, it's a tri-factor of brilliance with as Rob mentioned, uh, the car which we're going to be using today, the final change of the season uh, before we head to the land final, of course. Uh, let's take a little look at the Mercedes AMG C63 DTM. Twenty-three to three is just oh, yeah. crazy. Mercedes dominated here. Pascal Berlein was the victor in the first race, and Robert Wickens was simply unbeatable on the Sunday. Oh, she be in the house. Timo, push him off. Der Meister 2015. Lukas Auer, jetzt ist er der erste österreichische DTM-Sieger überhaupt. Glückwunsch. Mortara get it! Mortara get it in the last second! 
what a finish to a race. Best race of the season. My goodness me. This is the era of DTM that I grew up with, Rob. I, I became a fan myself back in, in 2012 and, and so many wonderful memories there, of course, cheering on Gary Paffett as a, as a, a home hero. Uh, we, of course, speaking of Austria, of course, we've got Lucas Auer, uh, race winner in the Mercedes. Of course, Pascal Verlein went on to Formula One to do some great things. Uh, and of course, as we saw multiple times in that BT, Robert Wickens, uh, a real star in these cars. Uh, and of course, for the entire production team here, we wish him uh, all the best as he continues his recovery after that horrific crash, uh, which thankfully he's still with us from uh, in IndyCar. Uh, and speaking of my generation, Rob, our generation, uh, we're also a generation of esports enthusiasts and of e-racing enthusiasts in general. And there is no bigger scene to try and set your name in history when it comes to e-racing and esports than LAN events. And that's exactly what's going to be happening in just one month's time in October. Yes, exactly. So we have the grand final coming up of the Mercedes AMG Motorsport e-racing competition where the six best participants of this online league will participate against the six Mercedes AMG DTM pros. For the third time we run this big event, a LAN event with 12 simulators at the Hockenheim Ring on the Mercedes AMG DTM Hospitality. And if you can't be there on Friday, October the 12th, of course, we will live stream it as well. Live stream 1915 CEST, so that should be 1715 GMT. And you can see when it is in your time zone on the Facebook page of Mercedes-Benz and of course also on the YouTube channel. Yeah, sadly, I'm not going to be there, but I'm, I'm certainly going to be doing my best to watch whether it is live or whether I'm going to be catching up on the uh, the live stream replay, of course. And the big question going into that event is, will someone finally be able to topple Tim Heinemann, the two times uh, MERC champion now? Although, when it comes to, to league play, the league standings, as you can see on your screen, he's nowhere near the picture for the in-season championship he he booked his ticket to the land final way back at the museum special event and we already have our five confirmed drivers for that event uh, to join him from league play so keith lee maulana Rebenak santos and kunsa though there is a, a reason a very specific reason why we say for the moment the only prize today will be pride and indeed potentially the championship win, which is going to go down between Keithley and Malana, since Rebenak is not here. There is a chance, Rob, that one, maybe two of these drivers, although it's looking more likely to just be the one from the, the rumours that we've been hearing, that one of these drivers might not be able to make it to the land final. In which case, all of a sudden, that P6 in the standings becomes very important indeed. Yes, and that P6... There's a quite close battle between Banki, Honsik, Jarschel and Zingafenen. Remember, you can get 25 points for a victory in this championship, so any of these can finish in P6. And if anything goes wrong to a driver that is currently qualified, they will move up into the final. Let's see who's racing with us in the race today. We've got coming up 10 minutes qualifying session and then directly afterwards a 20 minute race on the Red Bull Ring. And these are your drivers. And you can see Julian Kunze, the Team Euronix gaming driver, in the Euronics car with the number one, he wants to finish the season how he started it with the win. And indeed a pole position at that as well. You've got to look at the likes of Ben Spanky and Yaroslav Honzik, Tim Yarshall. They could all be fighting it out for a P6 position that could ultimately yet guarantee them a place at the land final. There's also a couple of new boys in though. Uh, or, well, yes, there is a couple of new boys. So Marius uh, Dreisig and uh, Richard Dobser, they're both new with us uh, today. And of course, there's the story that we're going to be carrying over from last time out, where there are some drivers who've taken part in multiple races, Rob, but who have yet to score a point, the likes of, uh, of Rachel and, uh, and Pinches and uh, Buron as well. We hope for their sakes that they do score today, uh, but generally in these sorts of races where it is just pride on the line, the other side of the argument is there's nothing really to lose and so everyone's going to be fighting tooth and nail to to take that final win and, and final podium opportunity of the season exactly they of course want to you know want to make it count at the last possible opportunity let's see how they will fare in qualifying session we are now in the qualifying session and we're watching the car i think that is julian kunze with the number one and ahead of him number 10 that's jack keithley 
That is the guy who's leading the online championship at the moment. He's had a, a very strong season, Keithley. In in a in a much closer season than those that came before it, he's taken three pole positions, the most out of anybody in the grid. He's taken three wins, the most out of anybody on the grid. He's not taken as many podiums as everyone else because he's been winning those races. But a strong driver is Jack, and certainly he's one who will fight tooth and nail to ensure that it'll be his name in the number one spot come the end of this session, come the end of the race, and indeed come the end of the championship. And a final reminder that in qualifying, once the clock hits zero, as Kunz is actually going to fly past there, that is qualifying over. No finishing your lap. That is it. And so Julian Kunz are now going to be winding up to take us on a lap around the Red Bull ring. Rob, I'm going to hand it over to you. Yes, very fast circuit. And it sounds like he missed a gear shift there, actually. Not sure if you uh, have picked this up. Oh, very, very loose already in the first corner. Very fast corner. Can be driven in third or fourth gear. And you can see it's long straights, straight after straight. And once again, he's shifting very late here. Heartbreaking for turn two. You can take a lot of different lines here. It's a little bit wide on the on the entry, but good exit. Gets a little bit loose there once again. You can see the first and second sector. It's all about the straight line performance of the car. Keatley in the rear view mirror looking to challenge Kunze already in the qualifying session there. Let's actually take a look from the outside because they might start racing a little bit earlier than we anticipated. Kunze lets Keatley through there. A little bit aggressive. <laughs> no, no less than we would expect from Jack Keatley, of course, but uh, he's just going to make his way around the Verth curve now. Uh, turn six and then into the sweeping right of turn seven. And this part of the track, Rob, I'd say one of the most difficult. Rint followed by Mobile. Downhill all the way. The corner's a lot tighter than you want it to be. Yes, that's for sure. And especially here, you have to be careful with the curve on the inside because it can really put you into a lot of trouble. So, so comes we were seeing, the finish line. yeah, 122s high were the way to go, and already a 122.805 there yes, from the Jack Keithley. The fastest time in pre-qualifying was a 122.711 mm -hmm. by Julian Kunze. So that's a very, very strong start for Jack Keithley. Behind him is a Shihan and Honzik. Yarshal there slots in under a tenth behind Keithley. Tim Yarshal been looking very strong indeed. He actually has yet to pick up a podium this season which is a shame on some counts because he's one of the most promising young drivers in this field uh but at the same time given the caliber and the depth of the field oh wow pace made it's going to be a difficult job manuals and gaffinen who has been growing in confidence throughout this season has just stuck his car up on pole position with a 122.655 that's the fastest time we've seen full stop Yes, but Jack Keithley, he's trying very hard to, to counter that time as he goes very wide over the curb. And you can see oh, there he went too wide and he had to abandon the lap because he exceeded the track limits. This is something that can be very common on the circuit. So, a, a, a very interesting top five. Not the top five that I would have been expecting. Then Gavin from Keithley, Yarshal from Sheehan, from Honzik, who of course picked up his only race win in the MERC. Literally a year ago, Kunze there with a better effort there, deposing Honzik out of the top five. Kunze going into P3. But Honzik, of course, picking up on a mistake, an incident uh, by the, the flared rivalry that is Keithley versus Heinemann to pick up that win. He only took his first podium of the season, though, literally two weeks ago. He's been in poor form up until a, a miraculous turn of form. It was almost like something clicked in his head finally. And he's certainly going to be looking to maybe take another podium as pinches their slots into P8. I noticed uh, Rachel going up there into P7. And actually, Julian Zengaffinen going up into P5 for the Swiss Twins is looking like a mighty fine qualifying session indeed. And they've been threatening to do something like this all year, to be fair. Yeah, they've been getting better and better as the season progresses. Definitely drivers that could have qualified for the finals, well, if they had attended all of the races. Mm. And performance by them. And also Tim Yarshall, let's just go back on board with him because he's purple once again in the first sector. We're just switching the camera up because we don't see too much of the number blocking the screen there. 
just making his way around Rock Corner. I, I was told that I've been completely pronouncing it wrong until today, so for the five years that I've been pr <laughs> pronouncing Rock wrong, I apologise. I was thinking more like Ranch Sauce or Rauch Sauce, never mind. It's all in the past now, uh, as is of course the driver that we're going through the corner, which he was named after there. That was a lot of words. Jochen Rint, of course, the Austrian Formula 1 World Champion, and oh! Unfortunately, getting it all wrong on the final turn there. Yarshall was looking to improve, maybe move up to P2, if not pole. He's thrown that away, and now it's down to Yaroslav Honzik to try and make an improvement. He's been deposed all the way down to P10 since we last saw him. So close here. Yes, Maulana now in P7, finally settled lap time. And Honzik, of course, in the signature pink car. Winner of the race last year in the e-racing competition. Only P10 this time. P11 now, but back up to P6. That's better. That's much better. That's around where he used to qualify on a consistent basis. And I'm trying to remember where he qualified last year. I think he was in the top five, so he's, he's not too far away. Certainly, he knows what he can do from this particular area. Let's talk about Sasha Kameinhart, Rob. The German, not too bad sticking it inside the top ten, to be honest. He's been a, a semi-regular in the competition now for a couple of years. Uh, and, of course, he took part in the museum event, uh, literally. <laughs> Uh, a few months ago where he was competing alongside Tim Heinemann. Didn't look too hot there, but the last person who did make the transition from the museum event uh, to the actual competition itself was Princing, and he picked up a podium in that event. Yeah, let's see how Sascha Gemeinhardt will do in this race. P10 so far, that's very decent. And I also wanted to jump to him because that's the livery that Pascal Wehrlein drove in the 2015 season, in the season when he won the title. And exactly on this track, you know, it was the scene of the Timo Schiedenraus scandal in Berlin. was pushed off by Timo Scheider. So, um, yeah, always a special occasion here with the 2015 cars on the Red Bull ring, especially. I think he was just jealous of the livery, to be honest. Can't Ooh, go wrong with black and bronze. It? Can't go wrong with black and bronze whatsoever. You can go wrong with timing, though, and timing is of the essence. We're just heading towards two minutes left, and so about gap of 30 seconds or so for you to start your lap otherwise you will not be able to finish it remember once that timer hits zero qualifying is over no finishing your last lap and certainly for one of our debutants marius dreisig you'll be wanting to improve from that lowly p15 quite a ways off as well he's three tenths away from the next man uh, which is of course our malaysian friend hazik although looking further up the order tim yarshall he's, he's had another scorcher of a sector one he just needs to put the rest of the lap together and he should be back up into the top two at the very least yeah it's purple sector as well for zengafenen who is sitting in provisional pole position let's see let's stay with yarshall here and we see no purple sector so far from kikli or kunze which is a bit surprising. But Yashal once again in the second sector. Oh, this could be this could be pole position. This is looking very tidy. The youngest driver on the grid. Kim Yashal. He tackles Rent with a wide berth. Looks nice. Looks clean. This is where he messed it up last time, of course. Mobile. That's looking Ooh. a lot cleaner. He still goes a little wide, but it is a lot cleaner. He didn't clout the inside curbing. Tim Yashal does not go on to provisional pole position. That last sector was his undoing once again. He does go second, though. However, if he had gone on to provisional pole, it might not look, be looking good for him still. Manuels and Gaffinen absolutely flying. The Swiss driver goes a little bit wide at mobile as well. Is this going to be an improvement of his provisional pole lap? Oh, Julian to Gaffinen goes ahead, and it is an improvement. But at the moment, it's as in Gaffinen front row. Wow, and I don't think anyone can really do something about this. Maulana won't be able to finish the lap because as the timing hits zero, the laps will be over. Kunz in the pit lane, Keithley in the pit lane as well. So what that means is double pole for the Zengafinens. That is... Has that ever happened? No, I don't think so. Has that ever happened in Maybe with the Schumachers in Formula 1. They're not twins, but they were brothers. Wow. Well, that might be the first in motorsport history, let alone e-racing history. Twins, Manuel Zengafenen ahead of Julian Zengafenen on the front row here at the final race of season three of the Mercedes-AMG e-racing competition. By the way, if you didn't guess, it was Manuel Zengafenen's first pole position as well. What a great time to take it, Rob. He's put himself in prime position for the win, although... If there was ever a time to not initiate a sibling rivalry, it would be now. 
Yeah, let's see how they battle against each other. We have not really seen them battle against each other in the season, so it will be interesting indeed as the cars are lining up on the grid for the final online race of the season. So it'll be manual on the right hand of your screens. It'll be Julian on the left. Watch out for Keithy as well, a serial race winner here as we're about to go racing for 20 minutes. It's the final round here of season three and we're away at the Red Bull ring. And already it looks like a poor start from Julian. Going up the inside is that Keithy. Manuel Zengaffin is going to sweep around the outside, keep his position there. We saw Julian Kutza going a little bit wide. Everyone through turn one nice and cleanly. That is what we like to see. No, it was Yarshall with the good start there. Up to P2. In fact, Keithy, he's down to P4. Hontik with a good start. He's past Kutza. Oh my goodness me. People flying past there. And who was that with the early break? It was that Yarshall. Yeah, he breaks way too early. And Keithley took massive advantage of that. He's up to P2. He's past Julian Zengaffinen as well. Yasha with a massive mistake there. He's all the way down to P4. And speaking of massive mistakes, Kutza as well there. Off the track. I wonder whether that was contact with Hontik or not. Because Kutz is now down to P13, Rob. It looked like Yasha picked up a slowdown penalty. And that caused a lot of chaos in the middle of the field there. And Kutz is the one who lost out the most down to P13. Round Roch, we go. Roch, sorry. No, again, past, past. Think, James. Turn five and then turn six, the berth curve through. Turn seven now. Heading towards Rint at the end of lap one here. Zengaffinen still leads by a healthy second margin, though Jack Keithley is clear. Already his brother has been uh, disposed of, Manuel. As further back, uh, Dreisig here battling away with Zeke and Dobser. Of course, the debutante Dobser as is Dreisig. Oh, there's and been oh, a collision. crash there. And who's it? It's Sheehan and Buron. And Sheehan just cannot get out of trouble quickly enough in these races. So often does he threaten to score good points. So often does he throw it away. At the end of lap one, then, it means that Manuel Zengaffinen leads from Keithley, Julian Zengaffinen, Jarsel Honzik pinches, Reichel looking to score his first points, Maulana looking to challenge Keithley for this championship, uh, in league play at least. Kunza, and after that incident, Dreisig up to P9 after just overtaking Kunza. What a debut from Dreisig. <laughs> he gained been... like six positions in one turn. Yeah, and he passed the guy who was the fastest in the in the pre-qualifying. He's considered one of the fastest drivers on race from Julian Kunze. What a debut it is. Oh, Rachel and Pinches as well. Just going into battle there further up the road. Of course, Reichel not scored a point. Actually, neither is Pinches, to be fair. So, a lot on the line here. Although, Andika Ramamalana, our Indonesian friend, he's going to want to get past quickly as well. Since he needs to at least finish ahead of Keithley to even have a chance of taking the number one position in the standings. And so, meanwhile, has gone back past Marius Dreisig. Nine, but that's not the start that he was hoping for. No. Just caught up in that early incident at the top of the hill at Remus. And I'm looking at the top, Rob, and I'm looking at the gap coming down. Oh, is that Maulana looking to go around the outside of Pinches? Surely not at turn one. No, indeed, but he's going to try and get the cut back now. You can already see that he's got the undercut. And remember, in these cars, DRS is available for the first time this year. So if you are within, it's more like a push to pass system uh, than Formula One. Uh, but if you're within two seconds of the car ahead of you, then you're able to do something along those lines. I don't think Malan was using his DRS on that particular occasion. But a nice undercut sees his way past Adam Pinches and into P7. Further back up, though, that second advantage that Manuels and Gaffman had is gone and Keithley is starting to ramp up the pressure he wants to take his fourth race win his final race win of the season potentially yeah but I have to say really strong start by Zengaffenen here just kept us cool in the beginning oh he picked up a slowdown penalty and that has blown it for him he loses position to Keithley his brother Yarshal and Homzik makes his way through and down to P5 after such a valiant effort in qualifying he is out of the picture, and Jack Keithley almost restoring order to things. He's into P1, although Julian's in Gavin, and he's feeling a little bit hard done by that his brother's fallen all the way back now. He's going to try him out to challenge for this win. Yes, and he has the DRS now, of course. Keithley has no slipstream ahead of him. Very good corner by Keithley there. But the um, Gaffinen should be able to close up a lot in the slipstream, and with the help of the DRS, of course. You can see there the wing is turned on the car of Gaffinen, number four. He's going he for, is he? using the DRS. 
tries the outside line at Remus and Keithy defends very well indeed. Again, the Rebel Ring is a great circuit for racing, Rob, but if you know how to run the defensive lines around this circuit, it is incredibly difficult to overtake. We can see there again on the outside goes Zengafanen, but seeing an opportunity is Yarshall. He tries to place his car in the right position. Zengafanen has enough overspeed to keep P2. This lead battle's getting close, and look who's there in P4 once again. Is it deja vu, or is it just a, a good coincidence? It's Yaroslav Honzik in P4 watching brief. And last year, it was the same situation. Exactly. Oh, oh! Yarshall! He flies off the track, completely missed the turn. And so back through goes Manuels and Gaffin and Yarsel back on the road. How many positions is he going to lose from that mistake? Through goes Reichel, through goes Maulana. He's lost back into P7, although he's going to go. Oh, huge crash. He, he gets completely taken out by Maulana, who lost it on exit there. And you've got to feel sorry for Yarsel. Again, it was an incident started by his own doing at going wide in turn seven. But he didn't deserve that. Maulana should have been a little bit careful. Yeah, that's for sure. And so it started off strong for Yashel. It looked like he could finally take this podium position, but now it's looking extremely <laughs> unlikely. Just what is looking more though. likely, though, is that Zengafen is about oh! to take the lead. He spins oh, around oh. there. Bit of contact by Honzik and down to P4. I've got a feeling that might have been Honzik's fault. I know Zengafen was going for the undercut, but. Honzik should have been a little bit more aware, and so all of a sudden it's looking so good for this and Gaffinen's manual back up into third. But look at Kunzer, what a recovery drive this is from him. He was all the way down in P10 at the end of lap one, and now he's back up into fourth. When the Thunder driver is dropping down the order, Banky it's Banky, and, and there's been a huge accident involving Banky and Maulana in turn three. Crazy. The gloves are off in the final race. <laughs> you could say that again. Big damage oh. on the car of Banky. That's a, a face that only a mother could love, unfortunately. Squished in, and, and for Ben Spunky, who took his first podium uh, of the season this season in uh, Brands Hatch, of course. Down to P15, it's a long race ahead for him now, sorting in behind Sheehan. To look back up at the front, though. It's looking better and better for Jack Keithy. He's been able to pull a 1.5 second gap. One, it's one second to 1.5 second fluctuating between himself and Honzik, of course. Honzik can still use the DRS if he wants to, but there's only limited amount of times you can use that push-to-pass system to drop the rear wing. And there's still 12 minutes left of this race, Rob. I'm sure that if he can remain within those two seconds, that he'll want to use it at a later time, as Julian's and Gaffin then actually making his way back past uh, Kunzer, using the DRS himself, he's back up into people. Well, I think that's been an accident as well, a bit further down, as we can see Gemeinhard there, stranded on the exit of, I think that's turn one for the right moment to re-enter the track, but it's been kind of a chaos race so far, hasn't it? Mm. I said people were going to go for the last podium opportunities. I didn't quite expect to that degree as we're looking now at Julian Kunzer, who's recently been overtaken by Julians and Gaffin. And you've got to watch out for Adam Pinches as well there. Pinches has been, has been running a real quiet race there, but he's up to P6. He's made his way back past Mikkel Reichel and... Looking to pick up some good points as well in this final race, the uh, ACR Zaxby driver. And as Kunzer just following Zengafen neatly through this final sector, he'll surely be looking to line up a return pass, uh, if not down into turn one, then most certainly into Remus at the top of the hill. We're not even halfway through the race. No. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff to go. Oh, sideways once again. The Zengafenans, they are really pushing hard here. Well, I think Pinches has been off. Yeah, Pinches went wide there at turn one, and he's down to P10, unfortunately. But there is Kunzer. He's going to fly past Julians and Gaffinen. And the German is back up into P4. Whereas further back, Pinches has fallen all the way back down to P10, unfortunately. Now looking at Manuels and Gaffinen. Look at the speed. Down that back straight into one of my favorite named corners of all time, Schlossgold. And Gaffinen moves his way into P2. Although, look at the undercut here from Yaroslav Honzik. These two battling is only going to enable Keithley to move away. And that's a good bit of defensive driving from Honzik. But, like I say, they're letting the win get away from them if they're going to keep battling each other. Keithley already has won three races of the season, including the last two races. Mm. The form is certainly speaking for Keithley. Lousy's rings. You no, know, they're not in the DRS window anymore. 
If they want yeah. to catch up, they pretty much have to wait for a mistake by Keith Lee. And when has Keith Lee ever made a mistake on his own? Well, we have seen it. Oh, Zengafenen once again, trying to make a pass on the start-finish straight. That was a mistake from Honzik, wasn't it? Just yeah. caught on the outside curbing. And of course, this gives Honzik now the DRS for this lap. Yeah, they crossed the line in time. I think they did. Is that Honzik with his wing down? I think it might very yes, well be. Yes. yes, it is. Instantly on the response. And so up the inside, he'll be on the outside of Remus. He might actually be ahead once they hit the corner. Indeed, he is. Breaks nice and late. And Honzik continues to hold on to that P2, but continues to allow Jack Keithley to run away. And here you can see the effect of the wing. This goes plop, and then you just have uh, a lot less friction there with the, with the air. Just keep gives in mind you a better though, Rob, top speed. Well, I was going to say, keep in mind though, Rob, there's only... The top 10 are the only people who are going to be scoring points. And we've talked about how P6 in the standings might actually be quite important as Tim Yartel here is going to fly past uh, Hazik there for P8. But P6 might end up being quite an important place in the standings if one person can't make it to the land final. Yaroslav Honzik, as things stand, would be in that P6 position after overtaking Ben Spunky. Yes, and Bunky here, the car in the foreground, currently P13. It looks very unlikely that he can score points, especially if he gets passed by Chihan here. Oh, good battle. But yeah, he does remain ahead for now. Yeah, it's 25, 18, 15. That is the point structure for the podium. So Honzik, at the very least, looking to score 15 points. There's an 11 point gap between him and Bunky. There's a five point gap between him and Yarshal behind. Obviously, the more points you score in this position, the better, but Manuel Zengafenen looking to pay a little dent into that one. Zengafenen going a little bit wide, and this is just going to allow Honzik the undercut once again. Zengafenen's not had too bad an exit, but he's got the poorer line. Honzik, though, choosing to stay a little bit more conservative. As I say, the 15 points as it stands is enough to see him clear of Ben Spunky by four points and Ben's monkey being down there in 13 how far is he off a point he's four seconds off a point he's six seconds off ninth with seven or well, the better part of eight minutes to go I should say he is going to need a hell of a lot of luck go his way yes but mistakes can happen easily we've seen it all race mm -hmm. especially with these battles being quite close here at least for P2 between Zengafenen and Honsik I think the battle for P3 on a little bit um, calmer now. Kunze ahead of Julian Zengafen now. Up the hill we go then for yet another run of it. Is oh Honzik clouts the inside curbing as well and he gets really loose. His lights are flashing. I I wouldn't lower the ruin if I was him. I don't think he's got the opportunity to anyway. And Zengafen's gonna have a, a free run. Oh, he did lower the wing. Yeah. Interesting. Real interesting. You have to He's be a little a... bit careful when you lower the wing, because if you're still yeah. in an area where you can get wheel spin, or if you're driving through a fast corner, you can easily lose the car. Seems very strange to me. I don't know. I don't know. Further back, Sheehan. Still battling away with Banky. Turkish driver defense for now. Someone's been off there. Someone's been off, yeah, and Sheehan really distracted by the smoke. Awful exit. I think it was Yashu who was in P11 now. Yeah. Gifts Banky the position either way. Banky up to P13. Good battle between these two, but again, we, we, we should be seeing them in the battle for points, and they're nowhere near it, unfortunately. Yes, and that's been the story for Sheehan, at least in the whole season. And he has a lot of potential. He just can't quite use it in the races. He's just involved in too many little accidents that... Uh, you know, make him drop back further in the field. Does it get to a point, Rob, where if you start, um, if you come getting involved in incidents, you have to more look at yourself than the other drivers around you because there's only so much luck that you can lose in a race. You know, you've got to be in the right place at the right time to not be hit, if you get what I'm saying. Well, of course, luck is also a factor and also how aggressive you drive and how aggressive you treat your, your opponents in the race, but I think what's also very important is the starting position and Jihan is just a driver who's always around P7, P8 in the qualifying and it's just an area where a lot of incidents can happen because you've got a lot of cars ahead of you and a lot of cars behind you. 
Now though, that's Yashil, that's not Kunze. Kunze has been past uh, Chihan and Dobster, and Yashil has dropped back even further with the 85. He's fallen apart, hasn't he? Yeah. Again, is the pressure getting to him? I'm... I, I wouldn't be so quick to judge, but... Again, he's, he's young and he was looking to fight for a win. All of a sudden, now just looking to scrap away for Ooh. points. And Jihan there, hunting round Richard Dobser. And case in point, sometimes you got to look at yourself, unfortunately, Emre. Let's talk about the happy stories of, these ra of this race, though. Let's talk about Michael Rechel, who is about to take his first point in the Mercedes-AMG <laughs> racing competition. If he keeps and the sixth position and behind him, Marius Dreisig, yeah. the debutant, in seventh. He qualified P15 or 14, wasn't it? it was definitely, Just goes to show. I think he, like, I think he, he only got in over the uh, reserve list as well into the <laughs> event. Because uh, Davide Toccacelli couldn't attend because of missing parts from his uh, steering wheel. Of course, they drive with the steering wheel from home. It's a video game. I've seen the question a lot of times in the chat. Yes, it is race from racing experience. Video game for PC. You can get it for free on Steam and... Julian Zengaffen and just got another position back up into fourth place ahead of Julian Kunze. Kunze has really struggled to pace this race, hasn't he? Well, for a moment it looked like he was flying because he caught up so quickly once again and <laughs> moved himself back up into fourth. But against Zengaffen, he's, you know, surely found a driver who can go at the very least the same pace. And with the DRS, it works as an equalizer. One lap one driver has it, next lap the other one has it. Although that said, we're starting to run out of that pendulum swing or the, the time allotted to, to have that pendulum swing since it's less than three and a half minutes now until the end of this race. Jack Keithy just coming across the line now. We're going to see two more laps, I want to say. Three, maybe? I think we will see three more laps. Yeah. And we haven't really talked about Jack Keithy, but yeah, once again... Waited for the mistakes of other drivers, just did his own race. A little bit aggressive in the beginning, but uh, with this form curve of Jack Keighley, what are you going to do about it? Is he finally going to win the final event? He was, uh, he was taken out of that lap final in Season 2. But you can't deny he has been on an incredible tear. If he wins this race, that's four race wins in his last five. It's three on the bounce. This has been very good for him. Only one race to go then at the grand final at the Hockenheim ring. When they're all racing on the same equipment, all sitting next to each other and next to the real DTM drivers. I'm sure last year still haunts Jack Keatley when he was taken out in an accident with Heinemann and Rebenach. We'll both be there again this year in the final. Of course, looking to be joined by new faces as well. Like Molana, for example, who's only nine yeah. in this race. Yashul yeah, into the back of Baron there. And Baron, I think, a little bit unlucky there to be punted off. He loses another position to Gemeinhart. What, 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 what's our analysis of Tim Yashul, Rob? Young, still time to grow, but a lot to prove in, in future seasons, in future years to come. Yes, and sometimes it looks like he's driving extremely maturely, but unfortunately in this race it shows that he still has some things to learn. Oh, in the background there, did you catch that? The Gaffin mm. just went all the way wide there and has to let Kunze, Kunze through. Kunze now into P4 and with the DRS, so that's bad news for Julian and So this is the penultimate lap of the race then, and advantage to Kunze at least. We're back up to Yaroslav Honzik though, who's been slowly turning the screw on Manuel Zengaffanen. He might not be looking to challenge for a race win today, Honzik. But P2 would not only be close enough, it would also be an absolute hammer blow to everyone in that P6 battle. If something was to happen, if a visa uh, wasn't to be accepted, if there was to be a, a, a conflict of, of time or, you know, a misscheduling, that P6 is such a crucial position and Honzik could be about to pull the most backdoor of backdoor entries into this land final of course he'd love to take p2 on track just in any case now looking uh, from the rear wing of manuel zingafinen he's in a precarious position as we're about to enter the final lap of this race he has a bunky only one place away from the points it looks quite unlikely that he could get the points here in this race but you never know maybe 
Onsig wants to decide it himself and just get past Sengafnan. Yeah, Yes, Sengafnan goes over the curve and that could be a slowdown penalty. That was just a really good corner as well from Honzik. He took that as cleanly as I've seen all day long. He's up the inside and surely this is going to be P2 for Yaroslav Honzik. Indeed it is. The Czech driver moving up into P2. Medus and Gaffin almost pushing him round Remus. And now he's going to be in a decent position because he's going to be able to use the DRS himself to try and push back. Although look at Honzik. He's got DRS as well from Keithley ahead. So just for a small moment... He was able to pick that up and defend into Schloss Gold. That could not have come at a more perfect time. I think Honzik will have DRS for the remainder of the lap because he passed uh, Zengafnen after the line. So it's looking very tough for Zengafnen. He needs a little miracle now in the final sector if he wants to take the second position. Meanwhile, his brother Julian Zengafnen has closed up once again to Kunze. Let's see if something can happen there. We have to go to Jack Keithley. To the man who's dominated the race once again, the Englishman driving for the ACR Zaxby team in the car of Christian Vitoris, comes through the final corner and it is going to be his third win in a row, fourth win of the season and the online title for Jack Keithley. Congratulations. Big, big statement going into that land final. Behind him, Yaroslav Honzik picks up two podiums in two. Really good drive from roughly the same place he started last season. Manuels and Gaffinen from pole. I think he'll be happy to take a podium. But it's a case of, all. Oh, what if? What if he had kept it together? Behind, Kunza picks up a solid P4 with Julians and Gaffinen a solid P5. Michael Reichel does score points in Season 3. He left it to the last race. That's a healthy amount as well with P6. What about Marius Dreisig, of course? P7 on his debut, a strong showing from the lower end of the grid. And Dika Ramamalana, disappointing down in P8. He was nowhere all day. Hazik, the Malaysia, picks up more points there in P9. And Adam Pinches picks up his first point as well in the MERC. P10 for the Hungarian, just beating out Emre Sheehan and Tim Yarshall, both with very disappointing evenings uh, at the office. Ben Spunky, of course, our only retirement. Yes, and we a, missed a that. We missed what happened to him because he was running yeah. in 11th position. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Bunky lost his sixth place in the standings. He's going to drop behind Honzig and probably also behind Van Gaffenen. We will figure that out in the aftermath of the race. But once again, congratulations, Jack Keithley. What a season it was. Didn't start off so well, but a strong finish in the end. And he scores the most points in the online season. And he goes into the live final with a large amount of confidence. And unless there are any last-minute swerves, he's going to be joined by Andika Ramamalana, Kevin Siggy Rebenak, Andre Santos, Julian Kunzer, and, of course, his fierce rival, Tim Heinemann, alongside the six Mercedes AMG DTM Pro Racers. Uh, in that grand final, Friday, October the 12th, you want to be there. It's a fantastic event to go and, uh, and join. And if you can't join it, of course, the live stream will be available on both Facebook and and YouTube on the Mercedes-Benz accounts live from 7.15 Central European Standard Time. It's sure to be an amazing time, but for now, we have to say au revoir to Season 3 and League Play role. Honestly, the best season of the three so far. So close, so many different winners, so many different podium takers, so many different pole positions, so many great battles and races that we've all enjoyed. Yeah, and of course, we followed the history of Mercedes-AMG DTM. We raced with the 190 from 1992, raced with the C-Class from 1995, and we had the CLK from 2003, and we had the C-Class of uh, 2005, and now also the C63 from 2015. So lots of challenges for the drivers, and I hope you enjoyed the live streams. If you took part in the online qualifier, of course, I hope you enjoyed it too. And of course... Big thank you to James Kirk, who's been with me here all season. That was great. You're too kind. <laughs> and I can only big say, make sure to tune in when the final arrives. Yeah, big thank you to you as well, Rob Wiesenmuller. Of course, you don't really know much apart from the commentating. He also does cameras. He's an esports. He's basically the organizer of so much of what you don't see behind the scenes. Make sure to give him your thanks as well. And thank you to all of you guys as well for joining us. If you were here for all nine races, uh, you are a real trooper. Thank you so much for joining us. And make sure to note down that October 12th date in your calendar uh, for the, the final of season three.
That's all from us then. It's it's time to wrap up. Thank you once again for watching. He's been Rob Wiesemuller. I've been James Kirk. And uh, until next time, take care for now.